What's up guys, Visual here, but you can call me James, and in this video I show you how to make an epic Fortnite theme text effect. So guys, before we get started with the video, I would just like to quickly thank bookmark.com for sponsoring the video. If you don't know already, Bookmark is hands down one of the easiest and coolest website builders out there, letting you create your own personal website, whether that be a design portfolio or an online store in the matter of minutes. It uses an AI website builder, which means you can create a site with no technical knowledge. If this does interest you, make sure you head over to bookmark.com and you can find more information on how to get started there. So guys, after speaking to a lot of you on both social media and also my design streams, which are every Monday, okay, so make sure you've got notifications on so you don't miss those. It's clear to me that a lot of you do sometimes struggle creating text. Now this can either make or break a design, so it is quite important. In this video, I thought I would give you guys a tutorial showing you how to make this really cool Fortnite style text effect. Although I have labeled this quote unquote Fortnite themed, you can actually follow this tutorial for almost any kind of design, simply changing small things like the font for example will actually alter the whole design style so make sure you keep that in mind anyways as always I don't want to ramble on for too long so I will begin with the tutorial as always if we can reach 500 likes on this video I will give you guys the PSD file to this just to mention of course it won't be as simple as opening it up and um, altering the text however some parts of the tutorial will be easier if you have the PSD and of course you will have the background that I made but yes without further ado let me show you how to make this text effect okay so first of all once Photoshop's open we need to make a new document so head over to file at the top select new and from here you can enter in your dimensions I have the width on 1920 the height on 1080 uh, everything else you can keep the same apart from the background contents I always select that as black and from here you can press the create button at the bottom and as you can see this gives us a nice size document to work with of course now we have our document the next step is to add our text so you can either head over to the toolbar there on the left hand side select the text tool or you can just press T on your keyboard and that will pop up from here you can just left click anywhere on your document and you can now type in your text so for me and uh, just for the tutorial sake I'm going to type in text and you can keep the color how it is it doesn't really matter because we will be changing that you now want to head over back to your move tool which is V on your keyboard and you can now alter the sizing and placement of this so in order to make sure that it is in the middle of the document you want to have your rulers enabled first of all to enable your rulers just press ctrl and R on your keyboard and from here you can just drag and drop these lines and they they will snap into place once they are in the middle like so and uh, there we go we now have a nice center point to work with with your text layer selected you can now move this about and make sure that it is in the center if you do wish to enlarge it all you have to do is press ctrl T on your keyboard and now holding down both alt and shift you can just increase the size of this so I'm going to make mine around about that big there we go that works well and just press enter once you're happy with it oh and one more thing I forgot to mention the font that I am using for this tutorial is actually the font Fortnite font which is called Burbank I will leave a link to it in the description down below however like I said at the start you can really use any font you want but yes now that we have our main text in here we now need to actually add a gradient on top of it like we've done here and also a nice texture the first step to do this is adding a layer style so um, head over to your layers panel here make sure the text layer is selected and just double click on that and this will open up the layer styles page as you can see you will now have all of these different styles available you want to head over to gradient overlay as I said and from here you will now need to copy down these settings my blend mode is selected as normal the opacity is on 100% and now the next option is the gradient which is where we add the color so just go ahead and click on that and from here you will be able to choose two different colors so for me I've gone with a nice sort of really light cyan color I believe it's called to a uh, really light blue so if you wish to go with the same color scheme then go ahead and copy down the hex code so just click on it and uh, where that hashtag is copy this one down so we've got 00 F F F6 and that is the first color here uh, press ok once you're happy with it and for the second color we've got hashtag 05AED8 so go ahead and copy down those colors if you wish or as I said you can go with a completely different color scheme it's up to you but if you're following along with the tutorial that might be easier so just press ok and ok on that and that's it for the gradient don't close down your layer styles tab though because we are going to add an inner shadow so go ahead and select that and from here you want to copy down these settings the blend mode we have selected as overlay the color to the right of that is a nice full white color on the color picker opacity on 100% angle on 90 distance on free and everything else is left on zero and once you've done that copy down those settings
settings, uh, you can press OK and exit out of the layer styles tab. Now with this layer selected, what you want to do is right click on it and go to rasterize and then from there you want to right click it again and go to rasterize layer style. What this has done is basically turned a text layer into a normal layer so we can edit it. However, before we do so, you want to duplicate this layer twice. Uh, really easy to do so, make sure it's enabled and just press Ctrl J on your keyboard twice. You can now use the little eye icon next to the uh, actual layer just to disable the bottom two and uh, yeah, only keep the top one enabled. With this top text layer selected, we are now going to actually um, create some lines, cuts, sort of random stuff within the text. It's really hard to explain. If I show you the example here, you can see uh, some parts are cut out and um, it looks really nice. To do this, really simple, head over to your lasso tool, which is L on your keyboard, or you can just select it on the toolbar. And from here, using your mouse, you may have to zoom in, which is just control plus. Uh, but yeah, using your mouse, you just want to select parts that you want to cut out. So I'm going to like highlight a line here, for example. Then you may want to highlight a line over here. As you can see, it will actually get rid of your other one. So in order to keep them, uh, just hold down shift. And as you can see, a plus icon will appear next to your lasso tool. And this will enable you to create multiple different selections within the same selection, if that does make sense. So uh, yeah, just hold down shift while you are doing this and you will be able to create many different ones. Um, just make sure they are random, alternate between them, have some big ones, some small ones, and uh, you don't want to do too many. All right, so yeah, don't overdo it. Oh, and yeah, don't cut out too much of the text to the point where you literally cannot read it. You only want a few selections like so, and I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out, control minus, and uh, from here, you can just press the delete button on your keyboard. And now if I just press control D in order to deselect the selection, you can see it creates this really nice effect. Comparing this to my example, I actually added a lot less originally. However, I do think this looks really good. So for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to roll with it. Now that that's done, we are going to add a texture on top of this layer. These are the textures that I used for my example, and I've gone ahead and uploaded them to an image site. So I will leave a link to that in the description down below. As you can see, we've got two different ones. However, the first one we are going to use is this top one here. So all you have to do is just click on it and then right click and go to copy image. And from here, head back into Photoshop. And now you can just press control V on your keyboard and that will be pasted in. If it isn't already covering all of your text, then make sure to enlarge it. Just control T, hold down shift and alt, make it bigger. But for me, it's covering it all so we can keep it how it is. And from here, we want to clipping mask it so it only goes onto the text. Make sure your texture background layer is selected. Right click on it and go to create clipping mask and from here it will now only be on the text where it says normal here at the top you want to actually scroll down and uh, select darken well it is actually at the top there select darken and as you can see that will blend in a whole lot better with the gradient layer so um, now that top text is basically done we're going to be working on the shadows and all of this backing text that we have here so first of all enable uh, one of your hidden layers as you can see you will have two of them I told you to uh, hide them at the start just enable one of them and from here you actually want to move this layer down so you can use a move tool to do that I'm going to use my down arrow key here just to move it down a little uh, around about there will do and I'm also going to move it right slightly uh, just like it would be if it was a shadow if I zoom in here you can see this is quite hard to see at the moment so we are going to actually make this a whole lot darker and uh, give it that shadow like effect so in order to do that you want to actually double click on this text layer and that will open up the layer styles tab from here what you want to do is uh, select gradient overlay again uh, you can keep all the settings how they are but we are going to change the color so click on gradient and from here you want to copy down this one that I have saved so uh, the color on the left is a nice dark blue color which is the hex code uh, 101d34 so go ahead and write that one in press ok once you're done and the color on the right hand side is a nice light blue color which is the hex code 66d6ff so go ahead and copy that down once you're happy with it press ok and make sure to actually save this gradient so in order to do that just press where it says new and as you can see it will be added to the list of your preset gradients press ok once you are done as i said you can keep all of the other settings how they are and uh, now what we're going to do is add a color overlay so select on color overlay and uh, from here keep the blend mode on normal but change the color to a nice dark blue doesn't really matter if it's um, any different press ok once you're done and now what you want to do is alter the opacity so lower it down quite a lot if you wish however for me I like to keep it quite high so I'm going to put mine on around about 75% I'm also going to add a drop shadow so go ahead and click on that enable it and copy down these settings so blend mode we've got on multiply the color is a full black color we've got opacity on 
31 percent distance on four spread on zero and size on seven and from there you can just press ok once you're happy with it moving on we are now going to add this main uh very large text backing first of all you want to enable the uh only hidden layer that you will have left so uh just press a little eye icon on that and from here you want to head over to a filter at the top select other and uh scroll down to where it says minimum there isn't really too many settings to change here uh the radius you want on around about 20 and the preserve you want to make sure is on roundness and from there you can just press ok once you're done although this looks all right the text really doesn't stand out so we're going to add a darker layer style in order for the main text to stand out more so yeah with this uh backing text layer selected you want to double click on it and open up the layer styles tab from here what you want to do is uh, click on gradient overlay you can keep uh the blend mode on normal opacity on 100 but the gradient you want to make sure is the one that you saved from a minute ago uh, which uh, should be this dark blue to this uh, nice light blue color once you have that on you just want to press ok one more thing you want to ensure that you have uh, the reverse option which is just next to the gradient selected so uh, make sure you click on that if you haven't already and also you want to click on inner shadow uh, within the layer styles tab and you want to make sure that's enabled for me the settings are similar to how I had before uh, so uh, the distance we have this time on the five and everything else is set to zero so once you've done that you can now press ok and exit out of the layer styles page I'm now going to go back and uh, select on this new backing layer we made which goes around the text and uh, you actually want to duplicate this layer so just press ctrl J on your keyboard and uh, you can hide the bottom one and keep the top one enabled with this top layer selected you now want to go ahead and right click on it and go to rasterize layer style so it just becomes a normal layer which we can edit as we did before head over to your lasso tool uh, which is L on your keyboard and uh, just select random parts that you want to cut out holding down shift while doing so because that way you can actually select multiple different ones um, and once you're happy with it you can just press delete on your keyboard like so now that's done and we've cut out some parts of the backing we're going to add another texture onto this layer so um, head over back to the link in the description where both of the textures are and this time select on the second one uh, well if it lets me select on it I don't know why I won't or just right click on it and go to copy image head back into Photoshop and press Control V and uh, you may actually need to increase the size of this so just hold down both shift and alt and make sure that it is covering that backing text you also want to make sure that the image layer of this um, is just above this uh, nice backing text here and once it is you can right click on it and go to create clipping mask this really doesn't blend in with the text at the moment so uh, where it says normal you want to click on that scroll all the way down to overlay and as you can see this will look a whole lot better from here you can also go ahead and click on this uh, texture layer and where it says opacity you can just lower that one down uh, just so it isn't as strong I'm going to put mine on around about 34% yeah that will do I think that looks really nice with that backing now done we are going to click on the hidden layer that we um, of course hid before and just enable that one now after you've enabled it make sure the actual layer is selected and double click on it to open up the layer styles tab you can keep the inner shadow and uh, gradient but you also want to click on color overlay you can keep the blend mode here on normal uh, but as for the color you want to make sure you have a, a dark blue one if you don't already I've got one with the hex code 102139 you can go with that if you wish or something similar press ok keep the opacity on 100 or maybe actually just decrease it slightly uh, around about 90% will do and now from here with your move tool selected and using your arrow keys you can just move this one down and as you move it down more you will start to see it um, it creates this nice almost like 3d effect on the text from here what you want to do is actually group all of your layers together so to do that press shift on your top layer and shift on your bottom layer leaving the background layer how it is you don't want to touch that one and now you want to press ctrl g on your keyboard and all of your layers will be grouped there you now want to go ahead and press ctrl j on this group layer and that will duplicate the group and from here you want to press ctrl e and this will merge it into a single layer with that done you now want to move this layer just behind the group and using this layer we are going to create another outline on this text so to do that head over to filter at the top select other and minimum um, but this time you actually want to decrease the radius for me personally I've got my radius on nine pixels uh, once again you want your preserve on roundness and you can press ok once you're done now what you want to do is double click on this layer opening up the layer styles tab and you want to head over to gradient overlay you can keep the top settings how they are but the gradient you want as that nice dark blue to light blue gradient which we did save before from there you can press ok and uh, where it says style just below it you want to change it from linear to uh, reflected you also want to make sure that reverse 
Labs is actually enabled as well. Once you've done that, you can press OK and exit out of the Layer Styles tab. Now from here, as you can see, we are almost done. Uh, one thing that we do need to work on is actually the color. Um, we are going to adjust this slightly. So first of all, you want to head over to your color adjustments at the bottom and you want to select Hue and Saturation. Now what you want to do is right click on that layer and go to Create Clipping Mask and that way it will only affect the group. The only slider that I'm going to actually change is the saturation one. I'm going to increase this one quite a bit. I'm going to put mine on around about plus 30. Once you're happy with that, you can then exit out of that tab and you can go back to color adjustments. This time select brightness and contrast. Once again, right click on the layer and go to create clipping mask and now adjust this one. So you can, of course, increase the brightness if you wish. I'm going to increase it slightly, but the contrast, that's what I want to increase. So I'm going to put mine on around about 25 and exit out of that once you are happy now this is almost looking complete there's a few other color adjustments that i would like to make so i will show you how to do those now first of all press shift on your brightness and contrast layer which should be at the top and then shift on your bottom layer not including the background by the way but yeah once you've done that just press ctrl g on your keyboard in order to group those all into one layer from here what you want to do is press ctrl j on your keyboard to duplicate the group and then ctrl e to merge it into one single layer from here you then want to head over to filter select blur and and then Gaussian Blur, and you want to make sure your radius is on around about, I'm gonna say 20 pixels, and from there you can press OK. Once you've done that, you want to grab your eraser tool, uh, which is also E on your keyboard, and you want to make sure the size is, I'm gonna say around about 120, and the hardness you want to make sure is on zero, that is very important. And from here, you just want to erase uh, some parts, just so you can see the text a little bit more. From here, what you want to do is actually change the blending mode from normal to uh, vivid light and as you can see this will create a really nice effect if needs be you can grab your eraser and actually erase off more parts of the text because this effect is actually like quite strong if I enable well I'll zoom in if I enable and disable it as you can see it actually really does alter the colors I'm now going to make a brand new layer and I'm going to grab my brush tool which is B on your keyboard I'm going to put my size on around about I'm going to say 300 the hardness on 0% and you want to make sure that your foreground color is a nice light blue around about there that will do press ok once you're done and now use your brush tool to select random parts of your text like i've done here and change the blending mode of this layer to um screen i reckon screen will work oh actually soft light works really well i'm going to keep mine on soft light i'm going to actually make a brand new layer once again and i'm going to increase the brush size this time to around about 500 and i'm going to pop that right in the middle i'm actually actually going to increase that even more so just press ctrl t and increase that and i'm going to change the blending mode of this new layer to soft light maybe uh to be honest with a lot of these it's like trial and error to see which which blending modes work best once you get one that you're happy with even lighten works well uh you can stick with that one i'm going to go with lighten as i said i think this works really well anyways guys that is it for the fortnite themed text effect as always if you have any questions or need some help make sure to leave it in the comments down below and i'll be sure to reply to you guys if you did go on to enjoy the video and it helped you then make sure to leave a like that would be much appreciated as i said if we can reach 500 likes then you will get the psd download also if you are new to the channel then make sure to subscribe with post notifications on and you will be notified every time i upload a brand new video finally guys if you are looking to improve any of your graphic design skills then make sure to check out my design store the link is below over there i have a load of personal packs that i use when creating designs which will of course help you out so make sure to check that out and yes guys as i said hopefully you did go on to enjoy this has been visual or james and i'm out peace